The curfew tolls the knell of parting day. The lowing herd winds slowly o'er the lee. The ploughman homeward plods his weary way and leaves the world to darkness and to me. Now fades the glimmering landscape on the sight and all the air a solemn stillness holds save where the beetle wheels his droning flight and drowsy tinklings lull the distant folds. Save that from yonder ivy-mantled tower the moping owl does the moon complain of such as wandering near her secret bower molest her ancient solitary reign. Beneath those rugged elms, that yew tree shade, where heaves the turf in many a mouldering heap, each in his narrow cell forever laid, the rude forefathers of the hamlet sleep. The breezy call of incense breathing morn, the swallow twittering from the straw built shed, the cock's shrill clarion or the echoing horn, no more shall rouse them from their lowly bed. For them no more the blazing hearth shall burn, or busy housewife ply her evening care. No children run to lift their sire's return, or climb his knees the envied kiss to share. Oft did the harvest to their sickle yield, their furrow oft the stubborn glebe has broke. How jocund did they drive their team afield! How bowed the woods beneath their sturdy stroke! Let not ambition mock their useful toil, their homely joys and destiny obscure, nor grandeur here with a disdainful smile the short and simple annals of the poor. The boast of heraldry, the pomp of power, and all that beauty, all that wealth e'er gave, awaits alike the inevitable hour. The paths of glory lead but to the grave. Nor you, ye proud, impute to these the fault, if memory o'er their tomb no trophies raise where through the long-drawn aisle and fretted vault the pealing anthem swells the note of praise. Can storied urn or animated bust back to its mansion call the fleeting breath? Can honour's voice provoke the silent dust or flattery soothe the dull cold ear of death? Perhaps in this neglected spot is laid some heart once pregnant with celestial fire. Hands, that the rod of empire might have swayed, or waked to ecstasy the living lyre. But knowledge to their eyes her ample page, rich with the spoils of time, did ne'er unroll. Chill penury repressed their noble rage, and froze the genial current of the soul. Full many a gem of purest ray serene, The dark unfathomed caves of ocean bear. Full many a flower is born to blush unseen, And waste its sweetness on the desert air. Some village, Hamden, that with dauntless breast The little tyrant of his fields withstood, some mute inglorious Milton here may rest, Some Cromwell's guiltless of his country's blood. The applause of listening senates run to command, The threats of pain and ruin to despise, To scatter plenty o'er a smiling land, And read their history in a nation's eyes. Their lot forbade, nor circumscribed alone their glowing virtues, but their crimes confined. Forbade to wade through slaughter to a throne and shut the gates of mercy on mankind. 
the struggling pans of conscious truth to hide, to quench the blushes of ingenuous shame, or heap the shrine of luxury and pride with incense kindled at the muse's flame. Far from the madding's crowd ignoble strife, their sober wishes never learned to stray. Along the cool sequestered vale of life, they kept the noiseless tenor of their way. Yet even these bones from insult to protect, some frail memorial still erected nigh, with uncouth rhymes and shapeless structure decked, implores a passing tribute of a sigh. Their names, their years, spelt by the unlettered muse, the place of fame and elegy supply. And many a holy text around she strews, that teach the rustic moralist to die. For who to dumb forgetfulness a prey, this pleasing anxious being e'er resigned, left the warm precincts of the cheerful day, nor cast one longing, lingering look behind. On some fond breast the parting soul relies, some pious drops the closing eye requires. Even from the tomb the voice of nature cries, even in our ashes live their wonted fires. For thee, who mindful of the unhonoured dead, dost in these lines their artless tale relate. If chance, by lonely contemplation led, some kindred spirits shall inquire their fate. Haply some hoary-headed swain may say, Oft have we seen him at the peeps of dawn, brushing with hasty steps the dews away, to meet the sun upon the upland lawn. There at the foot of yonder nodding beech, that wreathes its old fantastic roots so high, his listless length at noontide would he stretch, and pour upon the brook that babbles by. Hard by yon wood, now smiling as in scorn, muttering his wayward fancies he would row, now drooping, woeful one, like one forlorn, or crazed with care or crossed in hopeless love. One morn I missed him on the customed hill, along the heath and near his favourite tree. Another came, nor yet beside the rill, nor up the lawn, nor at the wood was he. The next with dirges due in sad array, slow through the churchway path we saw him borne. Approach and read, for thou canst read, the lay, graved on the stone beneath yon aged thorn. The Epitaph He arrests his head upon the lap of earth, a youth to fortune and to fame unknown. Fair science frowned not on his humble birth, and melancholy marked him for her own. Large was his bounty, and his soul sincere. Heaven did a recompense as largely send. He gave to misery all he had, a tear. He gained from heaven, t'was all he wished, a friend. No father seek his merits to disclose, or draw his frailties from their dread abode. There they alike in trembling hope repose, the bosom of his father and his god. Elegy written in a country churchyard. Written by Thomas Gray. Narrated by Jordan Harling.